So we just talked about in our last video what are the eight main ways or classifications by which cells can be can become injured. In this video we're going to talk about what do cells look like when they're injured. And in and in the last in the first video we talked about how there's a normal cell and when you apply stress to it it will either adapt or it will become injured. That's its options. Adapt oh, adapt or become injured. That's its choices. If it can't adapt then it was going to become injured. Now under the injured side there there are um, if this if the stress is applied it, it it depends on how big the stress is how long the stress is applied to the cell or the injurious the the you know the stress that's injuring the cell somehow it can be reversible if it passes the point of no return you know this imaginary line here if it passes the point of no return then it will necrose will undergo necrosis. So we're going to talk about right now some of the some of the signs or what is, what does the cell look like from a microscopic perspective or from you know, a cellular level what does the cell look like if it's able to reverse and and not become permanently damaged and die. Those two things are cellular swelling and fatty changes. So let's first discuss cellular swelling. You have a cell here with the nucleus and you have all the organelles mitochondria, Golgi, uh, you know, endoplasmic reticulum, all these um, parts of the cell. And inside this membrane, you have what is called a sodium potassium pump. The sodium potassium pump, let me explain this a little better. So let's say here we have a cell membrane. Okay. The cell membrane is a lipid bilayer, which means that there's two layers, a top and a bottom. And through this um, membrane, there is a sodium potassium pump. This is a sodium potassium pump. Inside the cell, there is an excess of sodium. So this pump will grab three of them. 3 sodium, this is the chemical symbol for sodium, and it will grab three of these and it will pump them to the outside of the cell. And then there's potassium in excess on the outside of the cell, this is the chemical symbol for potassium K. It will grab two of these and bring these in. So you're saying, what's the big deal? Well, you're taking three positive charged atoms out, and you're only bringing two in. So this creates uh, in neurons and in other cells an electrical potential. There's more positive outside, and there's a negative charge inside the cell. Now that causes an electrical potential and the neurons will talk about that later. But what happens, now this, this process is ATP dependent. It consumes ATP. It needs energy to do this. This little pump, it has to have energy um, to, to perform, perform this crucial part of the process. And what happens is that when we see cellular swelling, Usually this ATP pump or other pumps that control ion balance, an ion is just some kind of positive or negatively charged atom. That's what an ion is, 
or a molecule. Um, this, these are pumps are dysfunctional in some way, so you get chemical or cellular swelling. And usually what happens is the uh, osmotic pressure um, isn't equal, uh, equil it's not in homeostasis, so the cell begins to swell and becomes bigger. And there's a lot of water inside the cell trying to equal out the, the ion concentration inside the cell to the outside of the cell, and that's what causes cellular swelling. And you, the, the organ that is becoming damaged, it usually weighs more because there's more water inside of it. So you see cellular swelling. Also, there's a fatty change. Sorry, I have to kind of go through my drawing there. But let's talk about a fatty change. Let's say you have a cell here. And inside, you will start to see little bubbles, if you will. Now, these are little lipid. These are little bubbles full of lipids, which is fat. Not technically, but it just just for the sake of argument, let's just call it f fat. So we'll stick with our fatty change, um, part of reversible cell damage. You'll start seeing these little bubbles full of lipids. Now these are these usually occur in hepatocytes, hepatocytes, and. Myocytes. So hepatocytes and myocytes, because these cells undergo fat metabolism. They can metabolize fat. These types of cells. These hepato hepato is liver, and cytes is cell. So liver cells and myo is muscles, and cyte is cell again. So muscle cells. So in the liver and in muscles they will undergo fat metabolism. So usually when the liver or the muscle cells are getting damaged, especially the heart, you will see um, these little lipid vacuoles, these little lipid bubbles. And so that those are the two kinds um, of morpholo you know, morphology changes that you'll see, is you'll see cells becoming bigger, enlarged, and they'll start to weigh more because they're accumulating water. And fatty change, you'll start seeing them have these little bubbles full of lipids.